Hi everyone, I'm Uzair and in this video I'm going to explain why most of us in our generation are unhappy. If you are new here, I have created this channel with a mission to add values to other people's lives. I weekly upload videos on this channel related to psychology, life wisdom, self-help, productivity, mental health, business, education, leadership and other social issues. So if this is something you are interested in, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. Keep watching. In 1930, a book titled The Conquest of Happiness was published. The book was written by Bertrand Russell. Russell was a British philosopher, mathematician, social critic and a political activist. In his book, Russell mentions eight reasons that were causing unhappiness to people of his age. It has been 89 years since the book was published, but these reasons still sound true for our generation. Let's understand them one by one. One of the reasons for unhappiness is a feeling of meaninglessness and existential vacuum that many of us go through. Most of the people do not have a purpose in their life and ultimately start feeling meaninglessness in their life. Friedrich Nietzsche, a German philosopher said, He who has a why to live for can be almost anyhow and this is true for both men and women. In his book Men's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl explained his horrible experience in the Nazis' concentration camp. He describes that prisoners who gave up on their life, who had lost all hope for a future, were the first ones to die, and they died less from lack of food or lack of medicine but from lack of hope, lack of something to live for. This is a study called Employment Neurosis. In this study, it was found that people who were facing unemployment were going into depression and feeling unhappy because of mainly two reasons. In their mind, being jobless was equated with being useless and being useless was equated with having a meaningless life. But when the patients were persuaded to volunteer in youth organizations, adult education and similar causes, though their economic condition did not improve and the hunger was same but they started getting out of depression and unhappiness. The truth is humans don't live by welfare alone. Life is not a quest for pleasure or a quest for power but a quest for meaning. Frankel further explained that there can be three possible sources for finding meaning. Work that is doing something significant, love that is caring for a cause or for a person and and courage in difficult times. We all consider competition as a very healthy thing. Everywhere from our education system to corporate life, we have a survival of the fittest point of view for everything. But the problem is, this strong perception of competition is not as healthy as we think it is. Up to a certain point, competition can be good and can help bring out the best in people. But Competition becomes unhealthy when we view everything as flight or fight, life and death and a battle to control. Money and material success are the main point system we use to tally this competition. Unhappiness can be the outcome of overemphasizing competition for material success. Money is important. It allows you to do a lot of things that makes you happy but only up to a certain point. Beyond that, it does not. Money is just an ingredient in happiness and other ingredients are as important as money for a happy life. So unhealthy competition can poison our mind and distract us from our goal. Your goal is not to beat someone but to win by beating the best version of yourself. Most of us consider boredom as bad and we think it should be avoided at any cost and many times to avoid it we go in an unhealthy state of excitement. We are living in an age where we can get anything we want ju within just a few taps on our devices. From anything that you actually need to something that you just want to fulfill your desires. You can order everything online anytime sitting in your cozy bedroom and you will get it delivered to your home quickly. In fact, people can have relationships with just swapping left and right on their mobile phones. All this has trained our mind to always look for quick solutions and to get bored easily even in relationships. People spend far too much time managing the feeling of their partners, not enough time actually building the relationship. In the cycle of nature, few days are exciting and most days are not. 
the constant urge to always look for the excitement and to get pissed off with boredom leads you to a life where you feel unhappy most of the time most of us have a lifestyle where we go to the office deal with people do our work and then we come back to our home nervous fatigue is opposite to the physical fatigue of manual labor this fatigue accumulates from the rush our commute dealing with the moods of managers bosses and co-workers and the anxieties of keeping your job little by little these daily frustrations build up and we are on your nerves the result of all this is that it ultimately puts you in an unshakable habit of being stressed most of the time and you become too tired to be happy work is important it is our bread and butter but it's important to understand that work and life are two different things we work so that we can have a good quality of life our work is not our life as you know that we all are addicted to social media these products have manufactured habits and behaviors in us that have hooked us to them we all have started looking for appreciation through the lens of likes and reacts on our posts the dire need of appreciation is increasing day by day on social media everyone is busy sharing things that ultimately points to how blessed they are how beautiful is their relationship with their partners how happy they are how much fun they are having etc etc Why are you seeing all these posts on social media? You might be sitting bored and feeling lonely in your room. What may have been a productive, colorful day has now lost its luster, grown gray in comparison to the social bounty you see from a distance. Envy is increasing because through movies, newsrooms and other social platforms, we are learning the lifestyles of rich and famous people as the ideal lifestyle. Instead of being grateful to the countless beautiful things we are blessed with, we have started envying others for what they have or we think they have. Opening an app has become an opportunity to experience FOMO, jealousy, and unflattering comparisons. We are more prone to hatred than love or friendship. As I said in my earlier video while growing up you are told so many things that are actually not true. You are made to believe that a happy life means making a lot of money and having a lot of material success. You are trying to become something that you are not. And when we choose a life based on the opinions of others, it raises a sense of shame and guilt in us. We are supposed to achieve everything according to the set benchmarks and deadlines. Society will teach you that crying publicly or failing miserably at something as some sort of shame or sin. But what about other dark practicing sins like shady business practices, harshness and cruelty to colleagues and family, betrayal in the relationship, greed and ferocity in political conflicts? Are they not sins anymore? The garbage that is fed in our head while growing up is enough to feel guilt and shame for everything. We feel guilt and shame in so many things. There's no shortage of opportunities to feel like you are not living up to the standards of society, your parents, peers, on social media, your bosses, etc. In his book Russell called Persecution Mania, the result of self-absorption and a big ego. Our ego can also cause unhappiness to us. It can take many forms of beliefs like people are not thanking you enough. people are gossiping about you people don't realize how selflessly you are helping them people don't appreciate your true talents we should not take ourselves so seriously as we are not the center of the universe do not expect people to always appreciate you or not to find flaws in you do not get offended if you find people gossiping about you because it's a human nature instead of seeking the applause and approvals of others working for yourself and your dreams will help you raise strain from unhappiness we live in a society where everyone has their opinion your friends colleagues siblings parents relatives neighbors etc people don't know what they wish to do they either wish to do what others people do which is called conformism or they do what others people wish them to do which is called totalitarianism people who choose their life based on the opinions of others may ultimately lead an unsatisfactory life 
if you believe in something that society does not approve of a fear of public opinion arises in us and we start to hide our true beliefs you feel that if you don't do what everyone else is doing you may not fit in people also have a fear about what if they fail on choosing a different path instead of finding what you think about yourself you focus on what people think of you to avoid unhappiness you should follow your heart for your career you should choose a career with like minded people that nurture your ideas and your talents being different from the crowd gives you the strength and happiness you shouldn't be afraid to be you Thank you.